Well, hi everyone. So today's video will be all about the SWE interview process. And in the video, I'll be talking about OAs, um, aka online assessments, such as CodeSignal, um, what you can expect in phone interviews and how to approach them correctly. And finally, a general overview of what the interview process is like for SWE. So look forward to that. All right, so the general stages of the SWE interview process look something like first a resume screen, followed by an OA, then a recruiter call, followed by one or two phone interviews, and finally the final on-site interview. So for the resume screen, um, I talked about this in my previous video, and sometimes they do this before or after sending you an OA. So some companies like to screen your resume before uh, giving out OAs, and companies that do this are like Duolingo or LinkedIn, which means that you first have to have a good enough resume to even get an OA. While other companies such as Capital One um, regardless of what resume you have, uh, they'll send you the online assessment and then after you complete it, they'll look at your resume and decide if you should move forward to the next round. And in the resume screen, I think they mainly look for three things and these are ranked most to least important. I would say, which is first, your work experience, such as like what previous internships you worked at, um, your school that you go to, and finally your personal projects. So this means that even if you don't go to like a top school, but you have some really good internships at some top companies, you won't find it too hard to pass the resume screen, in my opinion. And I talked about this previously as well, but before you even start like applying to companies or thinking about applying, make sure you have like a really, really strong and solid resume so that you don't end up wasting your time. All right, so let's talk about OAs uh, and mainly code signals. So the main platforms for OAs are HackerRank and CodeSignal, although I do see a few codeability tests here and there, but it's not too common. And I'm not gonna talk too much about HackerRank since it's pretty straightforward. Um, you basically just have one or two questions that you have to pass all the test cases in a amount of time. And um, other than that, there's nothing else to it. Uh, for code, CodeSignal, however, um, you can think of it as like a standardized test uh, similar to the SAT or ACT if you go to a school in the US. And this means that um, for companies that use CodeSignal as their platform for OAs, if you do well on one of the CodeSignal tests, uh, you can share that score with um, all the other companies that use it as well. And just to name a few companies that use CodeSignals, um, Capital One, uh, Databricks, Hudson River Trading, um, and Roblox, they all use CodeSignal. So that means if you just do if you just get one good score, you can share it to every other company that also uses CodeSignal. And these scores also remain valid for a few months, which means that if you, you only need one good score per recruiting season, which is pretty nice. Um, and a lot of companies also require proctor scores, which means that during the test, you have to share your screen, uh, your video, and your audio as well. And to get a test, um, the main way to get one is for a company to send you an invite. Uh, otherwise, you can't really like get one of those proctor tests to do. And um, another thing is that once you take a proctor test, you have to wait uh, at least two weeks before taking another one. So just keep that in mind um, when you uh, choose to apply. Um, now to talk about the test in a bit more depth, um, the test contains four questions. And normally the first two are pretty easy um, and take about five to 10 minutes at max, uh, if, unless you're really unlucky. And then the next question, uh, the third question, is usually a heavy implementation question or simulation question. And I found that usually has to deal with uh, matrices or 2D arrays. Uh, finally, the last question is an algorithmic question. Um, and to solve it, um, you can brute force it, but you won't get all the test cases. And the only way to pass all the test cases is to find the optimal solution. And for this one, I found that using like a hash map or dictionary most of the time will allow me to do so. Um, each question is worth 300 points, which means the whole test is worth uh, 1,200 points. Um, then after you finish the test, this score gets scaled down to a total of 850 points. And in my opinion, anything above 820 to 830 uh, as a score is pretty solid and you won't get like flat out rejected by a company for having that score. Um, time also matters when you do the tests. Um, which means that if you finish earlier, you might get a higher score compared to someone who uh, finishes last minute. But time is, um, but your time isn't really uh, too important. Um, I think it's so instead of like uh, submitting earlier, 
with incomplete solutions, it's better to get all the test cases passed than submit. Since time, I think, accounts for maybe just 10 to 15 points max. So definitely prioritize passing all the test cases uh, over submitting incomplete solutions. And one important thing to note is that the fourth question uh, is weighted a lot more than question three, um, which means that if you get full score on Q1, Q2, and Q4, you'll still get a low 800 score um, rather than if you just did Q1, Q2, and Q3. So this is why I normally recommend people to uh, do the question in order of one, two, four, and three, instead of doing them one, two, three, and four. And finally, um, I think it's also important to note that sometimes these tests are very RNG. So while some people get like really easy questions, um, other people might get really hard questions. So um, if you get like really hard questions and you find that you're you aren't able to get like a good score, um, just hope that you get like easier questions the next time you do like a proctored test. Um, and I think that's mainly it for uh, code signals. Um, at the start, um, I had like seven seventies um, as my score, but I, I got lucky with one of the tests, um, and I was able to get uh, eight hundred forty six. So um, that was pretty good for me, and I was able to finish um, my finish my code signal tests uh, after I got that score. So the recruiter call is also a pretty common stage in the interview process. Uh, some of some companies have the recruiter call before you do the OA, while some have it after you do the OA. And generally in this call, it's just really short and informal call with your recruiter. And the recruiter will uh, talk about the company, the interview process, uh, maybe some uh, logistical questions like when the interview will start, when it will end, um, where the location is. And generally, um, it's pretty informal, so you don't have to really worry too much about it. You can also ask questions the, to the interviewer as well, such as like um, what the interview process is like, how to maybe prepare for future interviews, and they might give you some tips and hints on how to do so. Um, in my experience, uh, sometimes they will ask a few major bullet points about your uh, resume and past work experience, but you don't have to really prepare too much for this call. And in my case, I don't think I ever really prepared for a recruiter phone call. All right, now on to the phone interview. Um, I'm not too sure why this is called a phone interview, um, since most of the times it's done on Zoom or Teams or some other video conferencing application. But uh, in the phone interview, you can expect usually to have like one or two of these in your process. And these each of them lasts around one hour or maybe less, like 45 minutes. Um, and during it, you'll be talking to an employee in the company and they'll be interviewing about your background uh, as well as uh, your coding ability. So in the first few minutes, it'll be mainly introductions where you talk about your background, your school, your major maybe. And the interviewer will also talk about like what team they're on, what work they do and such. After that, the interviewer might want to review your resume with you. Um, so they might take like five to 10 minutes to ask you about some of the in-depth experiences um, or projects that you made. And I think it's really good to like be able to practice, practice talking about the bullet points in your resume in advance, since um, some of the interviewers might dive pretty deep into like the implementation details of like a certain project, or maybe like some of the work that you've done at your previous internship. Um, I also recommend uh, preparing to talk about like your favorite project or most complex project in advance since I found that in a lot of my interviews, uh, the interviewer would ask me to talk about like what my favorite project was and what were some obstacles I had while making it as well as like some of the use cases of the project um, in the real world. So after your resume screen, um, it's time to code. And most phone interviews are done on a platform called codepad.io, which is like a collaborative code editor. And you're also able to run the code uh, to test, uh, to do test cases as well. And for coding problems, it's usually uh, algorithmic ones such as lead code. And the interviewer uh, at the start will copy paste like the uh, description of the uh, problem into the codepad and give you some time to read it over and think about it. Um, sometimes they'll also include a test case as well, and if they don't, um, I think it's a really good idea to ask for like some test cases uh, to think about the problem in a better way. So after you read the question, um, the first thing you should do is, if possible, ask clarifying questions. Um, 
This shows that you like care about like the implementa uh, implementation details, you're very detailed oriented, and you worry about like some of the edge cases as well. Um, also, sometimes the question might be intentionally vague and the interviewer is basically seeing if you will be asking some uh, questions in order to clarify the problem to show that you're like a solid candidate. And um, another thing to note is that before like jumping to coding immediately, um, which I highly recommend not doing, um, you should discuss your algorithm or solution with the interviewer. And normally the way I do this is by like um, with the test case they provide or one that I come up with, I run through the algorithm step by step, um, writing comments of how uh, what happens at each iteration and how the algorithm will run and what like I store and it's just stuff like that. And the, if you do it this way, um, first of all, the interviewer or will first like approve of your uh, solution or maybe say that you're going in the wrong direction and you won't like waste your time coding up a solution that doesn't work out as well. And it also shows that um, you are able to like give good explanations about your solutions and communicate clearly, which is another thing that these interviewers also look for. Um, yeah, so make sure you talk about your algorithm and solution before you start coding, as well as run through maybe one or two test cases to show that it actually works and how it works. Um, and during the coding part, uh, you might be given like a few hints here and there if you need the help but I think you shouldn't expect uh, or re rely on it at least. And uh, I think another important thing is just to be really like communicative, um, clearly talk about your implementation details, why you're doing this at this step and um, some stuff like that. Uh, so the coding part will take up most of the interview time. Um, if you're able to finish early, the interviewer will have around five to 10 minutes where you can ask uh, them questions about like, the company or uh, technical questions. And I think some solid advice that I have for this part is to think of some really good technical questions to ask them. Um, questions like, uh, what's, the con what's the culture like? Or do you find your work interesting? These questions, in my opinion, are kind of shallow and don't really like make you seem like a good candidate. And what I like to do is I like to think of some like um, in-depth technical questions to ask, such as like, why did you choose to use this framework or this database compared to another one? And what are some of like the pros and cons in doing so and stuff like that. And by doing so, I think this shows that you care about like the technical aspect of um, the job more than like culture or like, work-life balance. And overall, it makes you seem like a stronger candidate. However, that being said, um, if you don't do well in the coding, um, nothing else really matters. So definitely um, focus on like getting the coding part done well, um, or else you probably won't be able to pass the technical phone interview. All right, so finally the onsite AKA final interview. Uh, some companies actually, they will have a separate onsite and final, but for most of the companies that I know, they combine their final and onsite and do just one big interview, um, which is the last one. And um, before in the past for the onsite, or final, they would fly you to um, their office where you would interview in person. But due to due to the pandemic now, um, most if not all of the on sites that I know about are basically virtual and done through um, video conferencing applications such as like Zoom or Teams. Um, and in the final interview, um, they're usually pretty long, around like two to four hours, uh, the general or usual length. Uh, and during the during this time, you usually talk with like. Uh, two or three interview, uh, two or three interviewers who are also employees from the company, in in each one of these interviews, it's basically the same thing as like the phone interview that I talked about previously earlier. Um, however, for like the final interview, I think you can be expected to talk to the hiring manager, um, and that's also pretty common. And for this call, you might get asked like algorithmic questions or leak code questions, but you also should expect to answer some behavioral questions like. Tell me about a time when you had an argument with your uh, workmate and how you resolved the issue. So just prepare for these. And I think the best way to do so is just to like um, review the questions in advance. Uh, think of a few major stories to use. And every time you get asked one of these behavioral questions, you can just apply the stories that you prepared ahead of time to answer the questions um, in a nice way. And after your final interview, uh, your career may uh, reach out to you in around one to two weeks max. Um, if you get ghosted for longer than that, 
I think um, the chances of you getting an offer is less. Um, and that's basically it for the interview process. Um, I hope you guys found it helpful and let me know if you have any questions or other video topics that you'd like for me to make in the future.